In this part, we're going to be modeling the fender flares. So I'm going to take these two pieces here, and I'm going to hit Ctrl and I, and hide everything else. This is what we're going to be modeling. So let's take these two pieces, and head over into edit mode. Now I'm going to take this, and that, and I'm also going to take this, this, and that. Now I'm going to press Shift and D to duplicate, and I'm going to press P to separate the selection. Now I'm going to take those two, so one and then two, I'm trying to select the one in the middle here. Let's deselect this. And I'm going to hit Ctrl J to join them. And let's see how we can clean this up a bit. So I'm going to take this and slide it down to about here. And let's take these four and press F. Let's see how we can even this out a bit. So I'm going to take this. Dissolve these two vertices here. Maybe dissolve that one. I'm just going to slide this up and dissolve the one we have here as well. Let me dissolve this vertex. Let's dissolve these edges. Let's get over here as well. Dissolve these two. All right, now let's get back into camera view and see what we have here. Okay, so I'm going to take this and let's slide them onto the edge of the fender flare. All around. Alright, so now that we have this, let's just delete whatever we have above. Now let's take this, let's get out of camera view and check it out in other views and see if it's sitting on the edge that it's supposed to be on. So I'm just going to press G and X here and move this out until it sits directly on that edge like that. I'm going to have to move a few vertices inside from this view. So I'm going to take this, press G and an X. Alright, now that we have that, let's make sure the curvature here is correct. So I'm going to take this, slide it back and press C, and move it back to about somewhere here. And I'm going to take this and move this in the Y a bit. I'm going to move this out a bit as well. Alright, there we go. Now we can take everything. I think I'm going to dissolve this one. So dissolve at C's. And I'm going to slide this down a bit. Slide this forward a bit. And there we go. So I'm going to take everything we have here and I'm going to extrude it in the x-axis to about there. Now we're going to have to do our best and then align it onto the edge we have, the second edge we have on the fender flare. Alright, there we go. Now we just need one more for the last one we have over here. So for that, I'm just going to take everything and I'm going to press F to fill in a face. And I'm going to hit I and then press Ctrl and I. Now let's insert this to about somewhere, I don't know, somewhere here. Now let's just delete the faces. Alright, so as usual, we're going to align everything on the edge we have or we see over there. Alright, 
So now let's take the edge on the back here and let's extrude it in the X axis to the inside until it cuts through the fender we have on the left. So I'm just going to pull it in to about somewhere here. I'm going to hit Alt and S and then shrink this out like so. Just so we have a slight raise over here. Just going to drop that down a little bit. So to about somewhere here, I think should be good. I'm going to take the whole thing we have here. So everything here. And I'm just going to raise it in the Z axis a little bit. So to about somewhere around here. Now let me just press S and Y and scale this in a bit. And then there we go. I'm going to take this, press G and move that up to about here. I think that should be good. Alright, now let me get to the side here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it in the Y to about here. And then press S and Y and make it flat like that. Now I'm going to have to angle it with the edge we have over here. So let me get to the side. Let me pull this in. And I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt, Shift, S and X and share this until it is angled with the door right here. Or with the fender, I mean, right there, like that. Let me take the one we have in here. I'm going to move it out just a little bit. Let me move this out a bit as well. You know, let's take both of them at the same time and move them out like so. Let me get to the side. Make sure I flatten this. Let me make this the... Let me deselect this and make this the active element and then flatten it. And then I'm going to extrude it in the x-axis to about... I think this is too much, so to about somewhere here should be good. All right, let's get back into camera view here. I'm going to create the piece of extrusion we have over here. So I'm going to go take the object and go into edit mode. And I'm going to take this and let's slide that back until it is aligned with it right there. And I'm going to take all the faces we have in here. Let's get to the camera view again. And I'm going to extrude it up, extrude it up in the Z axis. So we're going to put it somewhere around here. Should be good. And I'm going to take this and let's slide it in until it is angled with the surface we have over here. So up to somewhere around there, I think is good. Now let's see what that looks like. Okay, very nice. I'm going to get back in here. I want to do the same thing here. We're going to angle it with what we see in the reference image. So to about there. And there we go. All right. Now let's enable the subdivision surface modifier and see what this looks like. All right. So I think this is the point where we start adding in supporting edge loops. But before we do that, I want to do this area as well. So let me get to the side view. I'm going to press F to fill in this area. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make this flat as well. So I'm going to move it down here, take the whole thing, S and Z, and type in zero so that they are flat. I'm going to press F in here, and I'm going to hit I to insert some faces in here. Let me get to the camera view. Now I'm going to press G and Z and move this out or downwards like that. Now I'm going to move it in a Y axis a little bit. And there we go. I'm just going to move it down a bit more. I think that should be good. We have to bring the bumper and see what this looks like. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, now let's start adding in the supporting edge loops. So first of all, I'm going to put one edge loop in here and I'm going to hit Alt and S to shrink it out a little bit so we have it a bit rounded like that. All right, now we can go in and start adding in a supporting edge loop. I'm going to start with the one up here. So I'm going to press Ctrl and R3 here, press E and then F and move it to about there. I'm going to add one more down here. I'm just going to hit Alt and S and shrink it out just a little bit like that. Now let's make our way down here. Now we don't want this continuing all the way to the right side. So what we're going to do is to merge it around this area here. So I'm going to take one, two, three, and then merge it at the last one like that. And we can dissolve everything we have on the right hand side. Now I'm going to take this and let me just slide it up and slide it down a bit.
let me just put one more in here and you're gonna know why i'm just gonna keep that here like that for now okay let's get into camera view and make sure everything is looking just as we have it in the reference image so i'm gonna take this and slide this back in here to about somewhere around here i think this is exactly where it needs to be uh yeah i think this curve is also looking good so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add one more in here and then i'm gonna slide it up to about here and i think that should help with this side a bit but then we don't want it affecting the one at the back so i'm just gonna slide this down to about somewhere around here now let's see how we can support this area here so i'm just gonna press ctrl and r2 here and then move it to around here i'm gonna deselect all of these maybe all of just one yeah i guess just this one so just deselect this one and dissolve the rest i'm gonna take these two and then hit j let me get into full screen here so i can see things better i'm gonna press ctrl and r2 here align it with the one above deselect all the ones we have here and dissolve the rest now we're just going to merge this to the last one here so we have it wrap around very nicely now let's see how we can do the same thing here so i'm going to press ctrl and r2 here and align it with the right side like that deselect these three or maybe just these two and dissolve the edges i'm going to take these two and hit j and i'm going to take these three and merge at last there we go very nice I don't know about this area. I think maybe I should just dissolve that edge and keep it as it is. I think that looks way much better. I'm just going to take this. Let me slide it in a bit more to tighten that edge over there. And there we go. All right. So the final thing we're going to do before we add in the solidify, which I'm going to leave up to you guys, is to take the faces we have in here. And I'm going to extrude that in the Z axis. So up in the Z axis to about somewhere around here. And I'm going to scale it in the Y like so. I'm going to delete the faces we have in the back. We don't need those. And this is going to help cover this area up. Because if, if you look at it in the reference image, you can see we have a slight space here, which is covered by a panel behind it. And that panel is this extrusion we're creating here. So I'm just going to take this. Make sure, let's get to the side view. Make sure it's on the same level as this vertex here. And we're just going to share this. In the x axis until it's the same angle as the rest of it we have below. So I'm just going to take all of these and move it in the y axis to about somewhere around here. All right, very nice. Now let's get over here and see how we can fill in these faces. So I'm going to press Ctrl and R2 here, press E and F, align with the one we have here, put one more in the middle. I'm going to take one, two, three, four and hit F, deselect this and press F to this one. Now let's see how we can add in extra loop cuts here to fill in the rest of the faces. I'm just going to take this two and press F all the way in. I'm going to take all of these, press E, align it with that and move it to around there. All right, let's recalculate the normals and let's shade smooth to see what we have. Very nice. I'm going to press Ctrl and R3 here, E and then F, align it there. Take all of these, merge at last. And I'm going to dissolve this edge here. So dissolve edges. Hopefully that doesn't go all the way through. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, so dissolve edges. Now let's make our way back here and dissolve the one we have up here. I kind of want to keep this area a little bit flat. So let me take, let me take everything here. Let's slide it up. And I'm going to take all of this and slide it up as well. And I'm going to take everything we have down here as well. Slide it down, and I'm going to take all of these and slide it down to there. And I'm just going to slide it back into position. All right, now let's take everything we have here as well and slide it back down into position. I'm going to take everything we have here except for the ones that are already positioned. And I'm just going to slide that back into position. And then finally, the one below here, we're going to do the same with that as well. Slide it back up into position. And there we go. I'm just going to add a supporting edge loop on the back here, and we are looking good. Very nice. Let me just get to the front, and I'm going to take, I'm going to take everything here. So all of these, including this, and I think that should be good. Make this the active element, and I'm going to share this in so it's a little bit flat because it's too angled. So I'm going to just slant it in a bit like so. 
maybe a little bit out. I think that should be good. And just take all of this and move this in a little bit. Take that, move this in a little bit. Do the same thing here. Maybe one more here, and we are good. That is the front fender flare. Just gonna apply rotation and scale, make sure the normal is on the right direction. <laughs> then I'm gonna leave the solidifying up to you guys because we've done this over and over again. So I'm pretty sure you guys can handle that by yourself. We also forgot to do it for the front bumper. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that up to you guys as well. And uh, one more thing before I go, I'm gonna task you guys with making the rear fender or the rear fender flare and also the rear bumper. It shouldn't be too difficult for you guys because, you know, we made the front bumper is pretty much the same steps and similar steps to making the rear bumper. And I think it's even easier than the front bumper. So if I go into the camera view and show you what the rear bumper looks like. So you're going to make this area here. You're going to ignore the piece we have in the middle here. And when I say that piece, this giant black area we have here. So you're just going to ignore that and then make the rear bumper to the back here. And it comes back out here and then make all that. So this is what the rear bumper looks like in case you're wondering. So this is what you should have once you are finished. You can see how this looks. If we go into the camera view, you can see what I mean. So this cutout in here, you're going to ignore this huge area. We're going to do that uh, together. But just the main shape of the rear bumper is up to you to make.